Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to focus on income elasticity of demand. Income elasticity, or YD for short, shows how responsive a consumer is in terms of their spending and their demand to a change in their real income. And the formula for calculating YD is the percentage change in quantity demanded for a product divided by the percentage change in real income. Now, when it comes to income elasticity of demand, we look at different types of goods and services. And the crucial distinction to make is between a normal good and an inferior good. So, first of all, let's look at normal products. And we'll break it also down into normal necessities and normal luxuries. Normal good. The income elasticity of demand for a normal good is always positive. YED will be greater than zero. What that means is that if income goes up, then the consumer will spend more of that particular product. Now, normal goods have a positive income elasticity of demand. YD is greater than zero. But we make a distinction between normal necessities and normal luxuries. Normal necessities have an income elasticity of demand of between zero and plus one. So, for example, if uh, income increases by, let's say, 10% and the demand for a product increases by 4%, that would give an income elasticity of plus 0 0.4. Demand is rising less than proportionately to income. And typical necessities include everyday consumer products, bread, milk and fruits. Normal luxuries, on the other hand, how are income elastic they have an income elasticity of demand of greater than plus one. That means that demand increases more than proportionate to a change in income. So, for example, a, a rise in income of 8%, for example, might lead to a 20% rise in demand. Now, luxury goods, therefore, are much more income sensitive in terms of their demand. Keep in mind, of course, that what people regard as a necessity and a luxury is insanely contextual. It absolutely depends on the circumstances of the consumers involved. Inferior goods. Well, this is when we're looking at a rise in income leads to a fall in demand. So if incomes go up and people buy less, we have an income uh, elasticity of less than zero and the good is categorised as an inferior good. Typically, inferior goods and services exist where superior goods are available, if the consumer has the money available to buy them. So if we see a rise in income in the economy, as the economy, for example, recovers from a recession, then the demand curve for inferior goods will tend to shift inwards. Equally, uh, when real incomes and living standards are going down, for example, during a downturn, if wages are rising less quickly than prices, then oftentimes the demand for inferior goods actually goes up. And this is why we sometimes call inferior goods counter-cyclical products. When the economy is in a downturn, the demand for an inferior good may go up. So just briefly, a few examples of typical luxury and inferior goods. Keep in mind that luxuries have an income elasticity of demand of greater than plus one. And uh, typically we'd associate them with Strongly positive income assistance were associated with fine goods, expensive items, for example, business class travel compared to economy class travel. Inferior goods, well, there are plenty of those around. Uh, typically, the income assistance demand is much lower for very basic staple food products, for perhaps for mass transport, urban bus services, and perhaps economy travel compared to standard and, uh, business class travel. One example we might look at is the demand for cigarettes. Now, most people tend to assume that cigarettes are an inferior good. And there is some evidence for that. If you look at the average weekly spending on cigarettes in 2013, uh, and we arrange that by income decile, then we do see a little bit of a relationship. Uh, so, for example, the, the lowest share of income on spent by cigarettes is by the highest 10% income grouping, in other words, the the richest, the most well-off 10%. They only spend 2.3% of their income on cigarettes. Whereas the lowest, the poorest 10% groupings spend uh, £2.50 £2 a week on cigarettes. 
So there's some evidence for this, but actually there's no uniform picture on the link between income and weekly spending on cigarettes. And of course, the key point here is that many factors influence the demand for and spending on cigarettes. Social norms, the impact of taxation and other factors as well, including marketing and advertising. So it's, not, it's by no means obvious that the demand for cigarettes is actually um, makes them an inferior good. So this topic uh, video has looked at income elasticity of demand. The key thing to revise is the difference between a normal and an inferior good. And then when you get into looking at normal goods, to make a distinction between a normal necessity and a normal luxury. Keep watching our YouTube channel for, for more topic videos.